thing. Um, and tonight, Amelia is just an overhead camera because she was having some technical difficulties with her forward facing camera. <laughs> so Amelia, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. So welcome, everybody. Glad to have you here. I'll give you a wave on my overhead camera. Um, for some reason, the app version of Zoom on my phone just isn't logging me in. So I can't connect. I tried uninstalling, reinstalling. So um, you'll just have my hands teaching you today. Um, but I think it's going to be a fun introduction to the first box. Um, so if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I might not see them right away, but Sarah's monitoring the chat, as she mentioned. So um, she'll probably read it out to me and I'm happy to answer anything. Or if there's something in particular you want me to show, I'm happy to do that too. Um, but I thought it might be nice to kind of just do a quick overview of the different materials. I brought everything that was in the box, as well as a couple other little extra things um, that if you have lying around, great, but if you don't, no big deal. Um, so every box comes with one of these great handy little uh, pamphlets in here, um, and they uh, lay out everything that's in the box um, and talks about the different colors that you have, um, as well as some of the features. Um, so I thought it might be nice just to kind of review that with everybody. And then if there's any particular questions, either myself or Sarah can answer that for you. Um, so the first thing that I have um, here with me tonight are these really awesome Daniel Smith extra fine watercolors. Um, so these are uh, tube watercolor paints. It's a little different than when you get them in a pan. When they come out of the tube, they're going to be wet and kind of ready to paint with right away. Um, you can uh, add water to them to thin them down. Um, typically, you don't paint with the paint straight out of the tube onto the paper. You want to add some water to it, um, but how much water you add will vary how um, intense your color is, as well as how thick your paint is and how transparent it is. So um, we have three colors. Um, we have the Hansa Yellow Deep. Um, we have Prussian Blue. Prussian Blue. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading ahead and talking at the same time. So uh, the Prussian Blue. Um, and then we have the Thalo Turquoise. Um, so this is like kind of a greenish color. Um, that we have. So we have two cools and a warm, which is really nice. Um, and then of course the yellow and blue will make green. So you could also work monochromatically with two different greens. Um, so I'm just gonna set these aside for now. We go through the other um, materials. So the paper, um, the substrate that we have to work on for this quarter is the St. Cuthbert's Mill Bockingford traditional hot press watercolor paper pad. Um, so this is nice. It's um, a heavy, thick paper, um, and if you haven't had a chance to look through it yet, you'll see that you have several sheets. These are not glued together on all sides of the block, so you can pull sheets freely um, from the paper pad. Um, because it's so thick, as mentioned in um, this pamphlet, that does kind of help reduce the buckling um, because it's so heavy, so that's really nice. But an option if you want to get set up, um, if on a flat surface with your piece of paper, if you already pulled it out of your paper pad, you can tape it down to the table and that will help it uh, keep from buckling as well. Um, so this is really nice. If you've never worked with hot press paper, that means it has a smooth surface. So it's not quite as textured as maybe traditional watercolor paper you may have worked with in the past, the cold press. Um, but the really nice thing about this, um, especially working with um, the pencils, is that it has that smooth surface. You can get a smooth application of dry media um, or dry to wet media like the pencils. Um, but I particularly like doing watercolor paintings on this type of paper and then doing colored pencil on top. Um, so that might be a fun thing to do. Um, and uh, there's also a pen you can work with, which is great for um, a smoother surface of paper. Um, we have the Krita Color Aquagraph Colors Pocket Set. So these are pretty cool. Um, I'll go over these a little more in depth, but these are um, water-soluble graphite that has color to it. So they're not quite colored pencils. Um, they are activated with water. You can draw with them like a pencil, and then uh, the water will start to um, dissolve the, the pencil that's on the paper. So we'll, we'll play around with that a little bit. 
Um, but they're also um, chromatic gray. So that means they have some color to them, which is pretty awesome. So you're getting the same kind of finish of a graphite pencil, but with a touch of color. Um, and then there's a paint tray, which is really handy to have with the tubes. So this is just a plastic paint tray. Um, and then so you can fill your wells on this side, the small ones with your color, and then mix them in the larger wells. Um, there are two brushes, and you either got a size three or four of the smaller brush, um, and this is a size three eight. So these are two different kinds of brushes. Um, this one is the dagger brush, um, so they're pretty cool uh, because you can get um, scroll shapes, waves, foliage. Um, having the angled brush allows you to kind of press down and fan out, um, but you can also get pretty thin because of the angle. So we'll play around with that. I'll demonstrate a little more. Um, and then this uh, is a, a really nice detail brush. So it's a round brush, um, which is a pretty good brush to get just a, a variety of um, lines um, and you can fill in uh, small spaces with a small brush. So this is a really uh, handy tool to have and you can get lots of good details there. And then the last thing before we jump into our project um, that I wanna show you is the Eco Pigment Pen. Um, so this is nice. Um, you do wanna kind of give it some time to dry. Um, it is uh, waterproof. Um, so you should be able to go over your lines with washes of watercolor. However, I will say you still wanna give it some time to dry. So if you do, uh, complete a line drawing that you want to add watercolor to after, just make sure that you've given it enough time to dry so that it doesn't move on your paper. Um, but this is a, a really great complement to some of the other materials that we have. Um, so that is what came in the box. And then a couple of just little extra things I always keep handy when doing a painting. Um, I have two cups of water. Um, and you'll see why I have the two. Um, I have one for mixing water into my paint, and then I have one for cleaning my brushes. Um, and then I grabbed a pencil sharpener since I'm working with pencils. I have a, a scrap piece of watercolor paper to test my colors in, on before I apply them. Um, and then I have a couple paper towels um, just laying around um, because they're really helpful when uh, you need to either dry off your brush or if you need to dab on your paper, if you got too much water, you can use that. So I'm gonna set this aside because I already have pulled um, my paper uh, out. So I did a sketch of the cat um, photograph that I posted. So this is the photo. Um, if you have either uh, your phone handy, or if you have um, a laptop or an iPad, you can pull up the photo um, if you didn't print it out, um, if you want to use it as a reference. Um, but before I jump into this, I thought it would be nice just to take a moment and start to swatch out some of the materials, um, especially if uh, you're new to some of the tools or if you um, just wanted a chance to kind of warm up a little bit and uh, get your materials ready for the project. So I'm gonna put in my palette here. Um, my technique for putting paint from the tube into the palette, because a little bit of paint will actually go a long way, is I, when I open the tube, um, eh, sometimes it starts to come out on its own. Um, but when I squeeze out a little bit, I just kind of uh, cut off what, paint is coming out um, by pressing down the top into the palette. And that usually gives me a pretty good um, blob of paint to be pulling from. So again, I'll just open it. Um, usually there's already some kind of starting to come out of the tube just from the pressure of being moved around and squeezed. So I don't often squeeze out a big blob of paint. Um, I found that I often end up with a lot of leftover paint when I'm working. Um, I have a palette of actually some dried paint that um, I'm like, oh, I can just reactivate it with water. So I haven't um, cleaned it out yet, but um, I find that that little bit of paint really will go quite a long way. Um, so your brush, if you haven't used it yet, might be a little stiff. Um, so I usually just give it a little gentle press um, and kind of loosen up the brushes or the bristles a little bit. 
um, you don't want to press too hard, but it has a, um, it has, oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? I want to say not a fixative, but it has um, material on it that helps hold the bristle, bristles together. So that will come off when you dip it in water, um, but you can also give it just a really gentle bend. Um, so I'm going to start with the angle brush to apply the paint. Um, and I know I've gotten some requests just to kind of show a little bit of the process of mixing the paint, um, cleaning the brushes. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about that just a little bit to kind of help you get set up. Um, so I usually, this is going to be my, um, actually my, my cup for cleaning my brush. So let me just get set up in a way that will kind of flow with how I'm going to use my two cups. So let me actually scoot over a little bit because I want to demonstrate why I have the two cups. So this one here in this clear cup is going to be the water I use to activate my paints and water them down. So because I don't want the other color other colors to um, get into the paints that I am working with, um, I want to keep this water clear. So I will dip my brush in. Um, I usually just leave it as saturated as I can with the water. And then I will typically kind of just let the water come off the side of my brush to get a, a nice big drip of water in the in the well. It's a little hard to see just because of the color of the palette, but I try to get like a nice bead of water. Um, and then I start to mix them together in the palette that way. Um, part of why I do that is because sometimes it can splash, <laughs> um, but also I like to be able to control how much paint and um, water goes onto, onto my brush at a time. So since I have this mixed already, I'm going to go ahead and just get this over so I have a little more room. So you can play around with the different types of brush strokes that you can get. Um, that's kind of the fun thing about this angle brush here is that you can create sort of like a wave type shape if you press down like this and just give it a little bit of a rotation you can start to get a leaf shape I think my brush is kind of dry hey amelia it's sarah popping in here real quick sure um, would you mind pushing the paper up a little oh, bit more sure. there you go yeah. perfect thank right you. in line with the <laughs> with the water that's perfect yeah, thank you. Yeah, I uh, was I have a tendency to pull my paper in really close to my face <laughs> when I'm working. So thank you for for letting me know it was it was creeping down the desk. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can see that you can get, you know, some really thin lines. You can play around with the wider edge of the brush. Um, you know, just practicing your brush stroke is really helpful, um, especially if you haven't used an angle brush in the past, uh, it can be really nice to just play around and see what kind of marks you can get with the brush. Um, and also feel like you're getting a little bit more of a sense of its behavior and what kind of effects you can get. So um, you can see I cleaned off my brush in my uh, cup of what is my rinsing water. And then after I feel I felt like I got enough of the paint off, I will usually dry it first and then put it into my cup of clean water so that just in case any water is clinging to the brush from my rinsing cup, that that way I know um, that uh, I have a chance to wipe it off and that my brush is nice and clean. So you can see already the difference between the phthalo green, which is kind of a bluish green. Uh, I would say kind of a teal color. And then the, um, this is the, let me look at the name one more time, the Prussian blue. This is much more of a, it feels like a true blue color. And I would say that the phthalo green um, because it's more on the green side is a, a little bit of a warmer color. 
So it you can kind of think about it like um, if you think of the temperature of the paint uh, color that you have your yellow paint is really the warmest color. Then it kind of goes into the phthalo green. This would be in the middle with it being a, a warmer, cool color because, you know, the yellow and blue together make green. And then on the coolest end, you have the Prussian blue. So you have a nice little spectrum of color, I would say, in terms of temperature. I'm trying to make kind of a flower shape. It's a little, a little tricky. I think you have to rotate the paper, but you can play around with it. And it kind of looks like a leaf shape a little bit. Um, so you could do leaves, you could do grass, flower petals, all kinds of different shapes. So those are the paints that are in the tubes. Daniel Smith um, is known for having really beautiful, vibrant colors. So you can see I added water to the paints and, and thinned them out a little bit, but the color is still so vibrant and bright, um, especially that yellow. It's just so cheerful. Um, and I I mean, I am a big fan of yellow. Um, so I, I really like having that progression. And in fact, let's try out the little brush a little bit here um, and just kind of do a little, maybe a little bit of a color um, temperature gradient here. Okay. I'm just letting them blend into each other a little bit. Oops, sorry, pulling it too close to myself again. So I, I let the colors kind of blend into each other because I let them touch when they are still wet. And what's happening here is called a bloom, or it could also be called a cauliflower. Um, this happens when uh, water puddles into other uh, wet areas of paint. Um, I think it's kind of cool. So you can either work to get that effect on purpose, or um, you might not want that. So just knowing that um, having a really Painting two wet parts next to each other or having too much puddling um, can cause those blooms. Um, but that's what that effect is called. I'm just going to swatch one of these um, just so that you can see the effect of how to use these um, graphite, water soluble graphite pencils. Um, I did do a mixed post about some of the different techniques you can use, but um, that's what I was saying about this paper is really smooth. So you can get really nice graphite application um, and you can uh, vary the amount of pressure you use to get a gradient of color. So when you press harder, you'll get a, a deeper value. If you press more lightly, you'll get a lighter value. So you can do a graphite drawing like that. Um, but the other thing you can do is if you get your brush a little wet, um, just having a little water, you can start to pick up the color and blend it out, which is pretty amazing, I think, um, that not only is it a uh, water-soluble pencil, but it, it also has that little touch of color, which I think is nice. So you'll notice that what happens when you add the water to this is that it will totally pick up the graphite and spread it out over your paper. So something to keep in mind as you're working with these, if you're working with other watercolors or um, if you're adding layers and doing kind of a mixed media piece, just remember that you probably want to apply, if you want it to be like a regular pencil, you want to apply it last because if you go over it with other washes of color, it's going to pick up underneath. So just something to keep in mind um, as you're working with these. 
Um, and then of course, we have the pen, which you can use to go over. My paper's still a little damp, so it gives kind of a feathering effect. But you can draw over top of that and uh, mix that with the other media. So just a quick little introduction um, to the different materials that we're working with and some of the quirks um, of the, the materials. Oh, one more thing actually I'll show you that might be interesting is if you just take clear water, so I got this from my mixing cup, and paint a little patch on your paper. Might need to let it soak in for a moment, but you can take your pencil and go over it and get a little bit of a little bit of a more refined line. But if you notice it will start to feather out a little bit, especially if you hold your pencil on the side, you can get an effect like that too, where it starts to pick up and spread on the paper. So you have more than one way that you can do it. You can either uh, add the water after the pencil, or you can add the water before and then go over it with the pencil. Um, so definitely check out the, the post that I wrote about the different um, effects that you can get um, with the, the pencils, because it's really fun. Um, but I think for today, we'll kind of just play around with uh, working with adding the water after, um, and then we'll uh, kind of answer any questions or maybe get a little experimental as we work. Um, let me know really? if you have any questions or want me to show any of these again. Um, but I think uh, to have enough time to work on the drawing, I want to set this aside, let it dry, and jump into the next part. Um, Amelia, I just want to jump in here real quick. Oh, we yeah. do have a question in Oh, the great. Chat. Mm -hmm. um, what about the white pencil? I feel like I can't get it to show up well. So maybe there's a trick to it. Yeah, so that's a good question. So I, when I saw that there was a white pencil in here, I was really intrigued because I was like, oh, how, how might you use this? I have a couple ideas. There is um, black watercolor paper that exists. So this will probably work really well on that. But if you're just working with regular watercolor paper, I feel like if you have a layer of color on already and you go over it with the white pencil, you can add some marks uh, afterward, after your painting is dry. Um, it doesn't show up very vibrantly, but if I think if you add um, maybe a few layers, you can get it to show up. Um, or you can add some marks to it like that. I don't know if you can see very well. Um, it's easier to see in real life, but you can get it to start to show up. Um, maybe on this really dark patch, you can start to see. I put them here. It's I can see it. Okay. Yeah, it's hard. I feel like the camera doesn't pick it up super well but in person it's you can really see it um so that's one way you could use it um, after you have applied your watercolor paint and it's dry you can put it on the other thing i was playing around with was with some of these darker pencils um i was putting down a uh just a, a patch of um the graphite and then I went over it with this uh, white pencil. So I'm just going over it a couple of times. I'm pressing kind of hard um, when I do it. And then take some clean water and then uh, brush over that. And I'll show you also a swatch without the white so you can see kind of the difference. I think it also depends on how hard you press. I may have pressed a little too hard with the green pencil at first, but um, let me just activate this really quick. So I noticed that um, this one is not super light, but it's definitely lighter than this one. So what you can do is start to lighten up your uh, darker pencils by layering the white on top. 
um, and it will start to make it less uh, of a, a dark value. It'll make it more of a middle value, uh, which is nice. The other thing I think that, that could be interesting to experiment with, let me pick. So this is, I'm picking, um, it's the, the red and green uh, pencils. Picked them because red and green are complementary colors. So they'll stand out really well against each other. But I feel like you could also um, use it as a blending tool. So I'm going to have these overlap in the middle. My hope is that this will show up clearly. But in the middle, I'm using the white pencil to blend the two colors together. And then taking a little water. I'm starting on the red side. And then before I go over to the green side, cleaning off my brush because it's picking up a lot of the pencil. That's, I think the other trick is as you're um, adding water to these pencils, cleaning, cleaning off the excess will keep it from getting too muddy. So I kind of used it as a blending tool uh, between the two colors, um, just to kind of pull the the pigment together, I guess um, is what I'm trying to say, like the, the little uh, pieces of pigment in the graphite that I'm trying to use the white pencil to pull them together, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jessica mentioned that it's like burnishing. Yes, that's a, that's something you can do with colored pencils where you can take a, a white pencil or a, a plain wax pencil and um, go over the pencil to make it either look really smooth or blended together. So I'm glad that this was helpful. Yeah, so um, that could be another way that you might use the, the white pencil with the other materials as well. Um, Great, so please let me know if you have other questions as we go, um, but I'm going to go ahead and um, let me move this out of the way so there's not a shadow. Oops, still a shadow on there. Let me move this over here. Um, so it's really light, um, but I did a very simple sketch um, of the cat that's in this little uh, it looks like a bookcase with not a lot of books, um, but I thought that would be fun thinking about our theme, um, especially because when I saw this picture, I really liked how the colors were so close to the colors that we have in this palette. So we have some greens and reds, some really dark greens, blues, yellows. Um, I thought it all kind of came together really nicely. Um, it's a little bit more of a muted um, and dark color palette, but I think that that's a nice way to bring all these colors together. Now, you can use any colors you want, so don't feel like you have to make them perfectly true to the picture. If you would prefer to use lots of yellow paint and have it to be a much more cheery, bright, sunny picture, by all means, please feel free to do so. Um, you know, you can follow along with what I do, or you can make your own artistic choices, and that's perfectly welcome. Um, so I have my picture just kind of off to the side so that I can use it as a reference um, as I start to um, work on my painting. So I think for this, I'm interested in using these pencils. I think I'm going to start with them and I'm gonna think about the colors that I'm picking. So this is that kind of reddish brown. This one, it looks like a brown color. You really need to have a strong light to see the difference of some of these. <laughs> this is the green. So I want the red and the green for the column. Let's set that there. Um, and then this is sort of the bluish color. Okay. And then this is more of a, a lighter green. So I think I'm going to use, this is kind of a grayish blue. This is number 18113. Um, on here that says the aquagraph blue. So that's the one I'm going to use for my outlines. And I'm going to sharpen it a little. 
So the reason that I did a really loose sketch is because I'm not quite so concerned about um, having a perfect drawing because I'll be doing some drawing and um, filling in with paint as I go. So it's okay if um, the drawing changes. I'm not too worried about if, um, you know, I decide to go a different direction with some of the lines or if I maybe want to add something or take something out. So that's kind of the nice thing about um, just doing a really loose sketch um, and not worrying too much about making it perfectly accurate or just like the photo. Um, and that's the other thing too, um, if you're working from a photo, you don't have to be um, perfectly accurate to um, what is in the photo. You can make any kind of changes that you want. Um, but I'm gonna kind of just go over my outline here because I wanna fill in this background here with some pencil. So I'm just defining where I want that to be in my book here. And I'm keeping in mind that anything that is getting outlined, that outline can get picked up. So I'm trying not to focus so much on outlining and redrawing my whole sketch, but just giving myself a boundary of where I want to fill in around this little cat here. And for the fur, I'm just drawing kind of a jagged line but I'm not worrying about getting every single strand of fur because I can go back in with my white pencil after and I can define those little details later. Um, but a really good method for working on a painting or a drawing is to start really broad and then work towards the detail towards the end because as you are adding things to your painting. Um, it's much easier to work big and loose. And then as you get to those small little details, those can sit on top. They won't get lost or you don't have to try to paint or draw around them. Um, so I'm going to hold my pencil kind of on the side like this. So the way I'm gripping it, I have the pencil is kind of tucked into my palm and then I'm holding it with my forefinger and my thumb and it's kind of turned on the side. And the reason I'm showing you this grip, which is different from how I would hold for drawing a more like fine point line is because I'm going to use my finger to press down and go over on the side of the point. So that's also why I sharpened it because I wanted a, a bigger point to my pencil. And you can see that I'm getting much more coverage more quickly for this area in the background that's kind of just a big block of dark value. Um, I'm not, normally I would, I would say, you know, think about the direction of your line work, but my intention is to just go over this with watercolors. So it's going to disappear anyway. So you don't have to be too precious about the direction of the, the color block that you lay in. But this is a good technique you can use if you're drawing with graphite pencils or colored pencils as well. If you want to fill in a big area, just use the side of your pencil. And I'm just kind of slowing down and taking a little more care around some of these little detail areas. I fill it in. And then for this smaller part, I'm just going to rotate my paper. I'm changing my grip a little bit. Um, yeah. Sometimes you have to hold it a little differently, depending on the angle that you're holding it from. Um, but sometimes I'll flip it around in my hand, depending on how I need to hold it. And I'm not pressing too hard because as I lift the graphite with the water. Um, and I think I might even add a little bit of watercolor paint over it. But as I lift it, it's going to um, be picked up and then build in the puddle of water. So I don't feel like I need a ton of um, graphite on the paper because I know that it's all going to spread out and um, build onto itself. 
Um, and then there's this kind of shelf. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side too, in this area. So again, I'm just going to press down and fill in the space. And you can see I'm really, well, maybe you can't see, but I'll show you how I'm really using my finger to control um, how the direction of the pencil is going. And that kind of keeps it from getting too, um, too out of control and making marks that I, I didn't want it to make. Especially because I, you know, this is a different grip than how I would normally draw. So it helps me feel like I can drive the, the pencil a little more easily. And then I'm going to, even though in the picture, this kind of blends into this other space, I'm going to kind of just let it taper off gradually because it's going to get lighter in the foreground. So I don't want to go too far over. And so I made a little mistake, which is OK because I can grab, I didn't mention that I have, oh, I had it, um, an eraser. So you can use an eraser with this. Before you put the um, water on the paper, you can erase the um, pencil, which is really nice. So I'll show you in this pat, this little patch too, is that you can erase it just like you would erase a regular pencil. Um, so that's pretty awesome that um, you can do that. Now, when you, after you, let's see what happens. So after you put water on it, you can still erase it, but it at this point has kind of soaked into the fibers of the paper. So you can't fully erase it, but you can get some really interesting effects uh, when you start to pull some of that graphite out. You can lighten it up which could be really interesting if you want to add in highlights um, or make it lighter if, it, if you accidentally made it too dark, which is pretty cool. So that's the other awesome thing about it being graphite, because you can't do that with a lot of other materials. Um, it's kind of like once you put it on, it's on. Um, but this has some flexibility, which I think is pretty great. Um, so very cool feature of this material. Oh yeah, so I didn't go over the lines. Let me do that. Now, if you're worried about um, the graphite getting on the side of your hand, um, a trick you can do that is really handy is just take a paper towel or a piece of paper and you can put it under your hand and that will help prevent some smudging. So if you are like me and you started putting pencil down and then you need to go back and go over something, using the paper towel is a really helpful trick. Um, or like I said, a piece of paper works too, but um, it's really handy for that reason. Or if you just wanna prevent, um, you know, getting oils from your hands on your paper, it works for that too, which is really nice. So for the fur, I'm just kind of making some marks, um, kind of curvy marks, to suggest that the fur has some movement and is soft and it's not super stiff. Okay, so I think that's a, a good place to um, move on to adding some watercolor. So my tip for if you're working in a bigger patch is to use a bigger size brush. Um, so this is nice because we'll be able to use that to really fill in some space and having the angled tip where you can work really detailed with the pointy end 
you can get into some crevices with the the long um, angle flat side um, is really nice. So I think that I'm going to take a little water here. This is my clean water that I'm dipping into off camera here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of just a little bit. And in fact, I think I'm even going to pull some paint and just water it down. I don't want it to be too dark because what's going to happen is it's going to get darker when it mixes with the graphite. So I'm going to just dilute my blue paint a little bit so that I have enough to cover my brush, but not so much that it's going to be really dark and intense blue. And then I'm just going to go over the pencil and these, the blue and this kind of grayish blue are going to mix on the paper to make it darker. And what's cool about using these materials together is you can really go back and forth with them. And you can go back over your blue with your pencils again, especially if you like having that pencil texture or if you want to make marks with your pencils, um, like if you want to add some hatching or little dash marks, anything like that, you can definitely do that. Um, I personally um, really, really love the look of combining watercolor paints and pencils or um, colored pencils, any kind of mark making, I think look really beautiful together. So I was very excited about this combination of materials together. So my technique, I'm trying to keep my brush stroke in the same direction. So unlike the pencil, um, this time I'm trying to be consistent because my brush stroke is going to be what you can see um, left on the paper. So you'll be able to kind of see more of that. And this is where I want it to look a little more even. I don't want it to be um, patchy looking. Hey, Amelia, it's Sarah. Just yeah. uh, jumping in here to give you a time check. Sure. Um, you are about halfway through class tonight. So Great. thank you. About 45 minutes left. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. So here's where that angle brush really comes into hand comes in handy um, because I was able to get those really big flat areas. And now when I just turn my brush around, I'm able to use that thinner side to really get into those angles and detail areas. I think I'm going to add just a little more paint over here. Get a little longer. And when you go um, back over your watercolor wash with um, more paint, it is going to, the water going back on the paper will start to pick it up just a little bit. So you may need to do what I'm doing and just kind of go over it another time, another pass. And the trick with watercolors too is building up layers. So you can, um, you might want to go over it again with pencil and then add another wash of watercolor to help build up the values and um, the layers of paint as well. So you can kind of keep going back and forth. But I like to try to get a nice smooth wash, as smooth as I can. So another trick um, that I'll mention that I keep a paper towel underneath of my palette. Um, and I do that intentionally for a few reasons. One is so that it's in a handy spot for me to be able to wipe off my brush as I need. 
Um, but also sometimes when I'm mixing up paint in my palette, I'll get a little speck that kind of flies off of my brush, um, especially because, um, you know, using plastic or ceramic or whatever material that your palette is made of is very slick. So when you have any kind of wet material on it, it's going to resist it. Um, so this um, paper towel has caught a lot of my drips as I am mixing up my paints, which has been nice because it protected my paper from catching the drips. So um, that's how I like to set up my, my um, paintings and all of my materials. So that's just a tip. Um, if you're figuring out your setup for how you want to put your, your materials out with your paper. And I, what I'm doing is also trying to smooth out any um, areas where there's puddling. So I was starting to get a puddle over here and I picked it up with my brush and started to smooth it out because um, it will take longer to dry, uh, but it will also um, create, it can create blooms like I was showing you earlier, or um, it may, um, it may start to create other unwanted effects, like having a really dark spot uh, where I want it to not be as dark, maybe more of a even or light wash of color. So I try to just move that those puddles around a little bit more. Um, so that's one block. Um, I do feel like it could be a little more even, but I want to let it dry and then go over it again with um, the pencil. Um, but we'll move on to the next area. And this is a little bit darker underneath. So I might try adding in a little bit of the green and just kind of see what happens. So I'll mix a little of the blue and the green together. And I'm gonna use a little more paint this time to um, make it a little darker also. So, when you vary the amount of paint uh, to water mixture that you have, it makes sense because, you know, you think about how there's more of the pigment um, in the water. So not only will you get a little bit of a darker value, which is the lightness or darkness of a color, you'll also get a more intense and saturated color. So you can see, I did add a little bit of green to this, but because I have more paint on my brush, the blue is much more intense and bright blue. So it is a little darker because there's more paint that's covering up the white of the paper. So there's less white paper showing through. Um, but it's not just that it's, uh, covering up that white paper, there's more pigment, so it's going to be brighter and way more blue. So something to keep in mind as you are creating your paint mixtures is thinking about the ratio of water and paint and how that can affect a couple different things with your colors. So it's going to affect the value and the using the inherent value of the color. So how light or dark it is. For example, blue is going to be a darker value than yellow, um, but also the intensity. So how saturated, how bright, how intense is the color going to be? So it's a combination of those two things that when you are um, using more paint or more water, that will affect your outcome. And I mentioned that um, I was talking about the white of the paper showing through. So that's, I think the trick with watercolor is keeping in mind that for the most part, watercolors are transparent. It depends on the, the watercolor 
the color, the paint, um, and all that good stuff. But for the most part, they're transparent. So you're going to see layers underneath as you build them. So of course, you know, the more you thin out the paint, the less pigment there is, and therefore more of the white paper shows through. Um, so that can also affect your watercolors. And I mentioned um, at the beginning um, that with the tube paint, even though it comes out wet um, uh, from the tube, that you don't want to just uh, pick up the paint from the tube and put it onto your paper, maybe a very tiny amount in some situations, but for the most part, um, you'll waste a lot of paint that way um, because it will take more paint to cover the paper. It won't flow as easily. Um, but also, um, if you end up getting it wet or going over it with another layer, it's going to definitely pick up because it's sitting so thickly on top of the paper um, and will start to kind of make a little bit of a, a mess. Um, I remember when I was a kid the first time that I used watercolor paints, I didn't realize, I, I was so used to using tempera paint and acrylic paint, I didn't realize you had to use it a special way. Um, and then I was like, oh, and I really, that memory, memory really stayed with me. <laughs> um, so I always just think about that when I see tube watercolor paints. I had only ever used them as pans as a kid. So um, my my friend's sister had a really nice set of art supplies. And of course, being little kids, we got into them because um, we liked drawing and making art. And uh, that was when I learned that watercolor comes in tubes <laughs> and um, is very uh, different process than working with the, the pans. So... I don't know if anyone else has had a similar experience, but uh, it definitely was eye-opening for eight-year-old me. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set this aside because I have some pretty thick um, layers of paint on here, and I want to let them dry a little bit. And if you're in the same position where your, your painting is still on the wet side, feel free to kind of just sit and let it dry a little or find another spot that's not next to it that you can work on um, so that you can allow it to dry. But I did um, two drawings so that I can work on them at the same time. So while the background of that one's drying, um, I'm going to work on the pillars on this side. I think I'm going to take a similar approach, although this time, instead of putting the graphite on the back, I think I am going to do a wash of color on top, or um, yeah, I'm gonna do a wash of color on the paper, and then I'll go over it with the pencils on top. Um, and we'll just see what kind of effects we get. So this is a little more of a, a lighter green, I would say almost an emerald green. So I'm gonna take some of my phthalo green over here, or I'm sorry, phthalo turquoise. That's not quite green. It's a it's a warm blue, I would say, leaning towards green, but it's more of a blue. Um, and then I'm gonna take some yellow. And the reason I'm choosing the phthalo turquoise instead of the um, Prussian blue is because, like I was saying, it's already a little bit lighter and leaning a little more warm. So I think I'll get, um, I'll be happier with the green that I get. Um, so you can see uh, if you're doing the same mixture, it's that kind of a pretty like emerald green color. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a wash of that on. Just kind of use the tip of the brush to carefully move around some of the details. And you might notice I mentioned that this paper is really absorbent, that as you're working, um, the paint might even start to dry a little bit um, just because it's getting soaked into the paper so quickly. So you don't have to rush, but um, kind of keeping that paint moving 
on the paper is going to help you get a little bit of a more even wash of color. And I'm, I'm just kind of going back in and smoothing some areas where I'm noticing a little more puddling. And I'm trying to keep a consistent amount of paint. It's tough. I think the trickiest thing about mixing paints is having enough paint to cover an area. And because um, you can see it's getting lighter because I'm running out of the paint. So you might have to mix a little more as you go. And it might not mix or it might not match perfectly. So you might have to go back and play around, but get as close as you can. It's just a little more yellow. Okay, so I have just a little bit of um, uneven areas. Let me, I think I'm going to take my brush. So I cleaned it off um, in my uh, rinsing cup and I'm dipping it into my uh, mixing water. And I'm just going to kind of dab a little bit of the water off. And with my damp brush, I'm going to kind of go in and try to blend out some of these areas that are not quite as smooth, and then maybe add a little more color back in. I'm using the clear water to kind of reactivate and move around the paint a little bit. So for the most part, with watercolors, um, as you once you put them down on the paper and they start to dry, they'll soak into the fiber of the paper. Um, but before they're completely dry, you can go back in and activate them a little bit um, and still move the the watercolors around. Um, so you have a little bit of flexibility with that. So. Um, I think also what's kind of cool is that the the wood that the cat is leaning up against is a little aged, um, like the paint's peeling off a little bit. And I feel like that's kind of the texture that we're getting with um, the paint that is on the paper. So I'm going to, I kind of like that. I think I'm going to leave it. And while I let that dry, because I don't want to move on to the spot yet, because this is still damp, um, I'm going to. Uh, start painting the books. And I think for those, when I am going to um, use my thinner brush, and um, it looks like uh, they are mostly, there's a blue book, um, and then a gray book, and a, a kind of yellow book. But I think that I'm going to just use um, some more vibrant colors, uh, since there's so much um, of a dark background and the cat is um, I'm going to leave the cat white so I think that it'll be nice to have some more pops of color
And um, a trick that you can do with your yellow, so if you feel like it's too bright, um, now normally you can mix it with um, its complement, which would be purple. We don't have purple in this case. Um, so I think just adding a teeny tiny, very, very tiny bit of blue to some yellow, it'll make it green because those colors mixed together will make green. Um, but I feel like it will help to make it a little bit, just a little bit darker. Um, so I mixed the tiniest bit of blue in and I just want to show you the difference between these two very subtle but you can see how it's a little darker and a little cooler so um, if you want to get some variation because you can't really change the value of especially yellow with just mixing more water into it so you kind of have to mix in a color and with a limited palette it's a little challenging so um, kind of just work with what you have and play around with your mixture and it will become a little bit green, but I added a little more blue in there and you can kind of make a little bit of a value scale with that. So if you wanna try to get some shadows, you have a couple options. You can either put a layer of blue on a dry, um, blue or green on a, a dried, um, layer of paint on the paper, or you can kind of mix um, that color in there. And it, it, like I said, it'll be a little green, but you can tell that it's a sort of a shadowy color in there. And to blend the colors together, just clean off your brush, make sure that there isn't any paint left on your brush, grab some clean water from your uh, mixing cup, dab a little excess water off, and then you can very gently sort of wiggle your paintbrush and wipe off the paint as you pick it up. But you can use this method to blend two, go two colors together. And you can start to kind of create a softened gradient Hold this up a little closer in just a moment. Um, but you can soften it. So if you don't want as harsh of a line of color, you can see how that really softened. So there's still a distinction and you might have to go over it a little bit more than once, kind of play with it, but um, yeah, so that's a way you can start to blend colors together and get a nice soft um, transition between the two colors. So another thing you can do is start to apply um, a pretty saturated, um, heavy uh, paint and water mixture and start to put it down and just a little bit, clean off your brush and then take some clean water, not too much. And then you can start to pull it from where your darker uh, puddle of paint is and spread that out. And as it gets thinner, using the same sort of blending technique, just picking it up and dragging it. You can um, spread your color out that way too. If it starts to get a little dry, just add a little more water to your brush. But you can get a bit of a transition that way too. I feel like it's a little too light in some areas, so I'm gonna go in and add some blue. And because my paper is already wet, get this really interesting sort of feathering effect there as well. So there's two different ways you can approach filling in an area. Like that. So this feels a little more dry, so I'm gonna skip back over while these books dry. 
And that's, I think, um, kind of a helpful tip when working with watercolors is just thinking about um, how you can move around and sort of strategically blocking in areas as you're adding washes will help you to make decisions about what to add next and avoid having your colors run into each other when you don't want them to and then getting muddy on your paper. Um, so I am going to kind of loosely sketch out this interesting pillar that's next to the screen one and just kind of block out some of the, the details. But again, I'm using the, um, this is the red pencil 183.6. Um, not worrying too much about getting a perfect uh, sketch or drawing because very likely much of this will get washed away when I add um, water on top. So you can kind of just make a rough drawing like that. And then you have these spiral shapes. Now if you have any line work that you want to preserve, you can use just a regular drawing pencil. So this is another Krita color pencil. This came in the, the previous box. Um, but you can use this to do a sketch. This is what I drew my cat with um, that I don't want that sketch to budge. You can um, switch over to a regular graphite pencil and that will um, allow you to preserve your drawing when you add your watercolor washes on top. Um, yeah, so this has the red and the green. So since I have my red pencil, I'm gonna kind of fill in a little bit of where those red areas will go. And again, I'm not I'm not terribly worried about being super accurate to the photo. Um, it's more that I am just kind of using that as a general reference and then just kind of filling it in however I kind of want to. So that's a kind of a nice low pressure way to work on a piece of art is just remembering that it doesn't have to be, you're, you know, you're not a camera. Um, you get to filter images through your own artistic lens, which is really nice. So that means that, you know, if you want to change something, you can, or if there's a part that feels really challenging that maybe you're not quite ready to resolve, you can always just change it or leave parts out. So you can add things in, take them out, however you want, um, which I think is what makes art exciting and fun um, when you're doing a drawing. Okay. So I filled in some areas that I want to have um, the red color. So again, I'm just going to take some clean water and I'm going to spread out that paint or that graphite a little bit more. And what's nice about these pencils too is even though they're very subtle and they have a little more of a grayish um, overall color to them, you can still have more variety in your color palette, which is really nice. So it does allow more than just that yellow color for you to warm up some of your colors. Since you have the red, there's reddish brown. All that good stuff. I do think what's kind of neat is that depending on how much water you use, you can still see some of your sketch lines underneath when you um, go over it with the water. So you still kind of have that little bit of drawing 
under your painting, which is pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna go back over to my other piece now because this one is feeling pretty dry. Um, so I'm going to go over this again with, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Is this the same one? No. If this is um perpetual artist problem for me. I don't know if you guys can relate to this. I put something down, I look away, and then I can't find where I put it. Um, I'm sure it's around here. Where is it? Oh, I put it back in the, the little box. I don't know if you guys can relate to that. <laughs> but I, I tend to put something down, and then I reach for something else. And I'm like, where did that go? I just had it. Sometimes I think these pencils grow legs and walk away. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad Sarah can relate to that, too. <laughs> so I'm just going back over this background because I want it to be darker, but also I don't want it to be so blue. Um, so now I'm kind of going back over it as, as if it were a pencil drawing. I'm going back in and adding in some graphite. And this is, I'm using that, the blue again. That's what I really love about these uh, materials together is that um, with the limited colors that you have in your tubes, you can go in with these pencils and then that kind of helps you to either make them darker, you can add in a little more range of color, um, and then you get to kind of have the mix of using a dry media and a wet media together, but you have the flexibility of using water with them too. So I think it's a pretty fun pairing to try to, um, see how you can get all these different tools to play together. I'm curious if um, anyone has used these water soluble pencils before or something like them, or if you've only ever maybe used the water soluble um, colored pencils before. Uh, I'm excited to kind of hear how people have been enjoying trying them out and um, maybe some ideas that people have or experiments that they came up with. Um, so when uh, you're sharing your work, if you want to talk a little bit about your experience using this tool, if it's new to you, um, maybe some things that were exciting for you to discover. I know I would love to hear about that. Jumping in here, Amelia. <clears throat> We've got about 15 minutes left of class. So if awesome. you wanted to do um, like a show and tell Q&A yeah. or anything like that, um, you let me know when you're ready. Great. Uh, maybe in another four minutes, in, uh, maybe at 820, that would give people some time to yeah. wrap up oh. what they're, they're working on. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds good. Yeah, as you guys are creating um, in the next couple of minutes, maybe think about if there's something in particular that you discovered that you want to talk about. It doesn't have to just be with the, the pencil, but maybe just the process of mixing the paints or getting the hang of using water with your materials. Um, I would love to hear about, you know, how, how it's going for you and um, or maybe if you worked on something else other than the drawing of the cat, I'd be really excited to see what you did. So I'm doing a couple layers now. So just in case you're wondering what I'm doing. So I did a layer of marks going all in one direction and now I'm going in the other direction to create kind of a hatching sort of look. Um, but I may go over it again with um, some water to sort of blend out that um, that those lines a little more. 
I, I like having the blue underneath the wash of blue underneath because I feel like it um kind of eliminates that white of the paper so I feel like it's just has more coverage that way I really love um, drawing and drawing as a medium. So uh, I'm extra excited about the pencils. I feel like it's just a way to bridge drawing and painting even more. using a little more water now. I think um, that will kind of help lift up this pigment a little more because it's so, well, this is a little thicker than the paint, um, the wash of paint. So just using more water to kind of move it around a little more. Right, so I'm just gonna kind of wrap up putting this wash of water on, and then if anybody wants to share, we can do our show and tell. Okay, so if anybody wants to um, share what they made or uh, ask a question or give us a comment or anything like that, you can physically raise your hand or you can virtually raise your hand um, and I will spotlight you. Um, but if you want this to be a working Friday night, by all means, we fully support that too. <laughs> Definitely. I would just like to comment that um, these water-soluble pencils are so... I mean, for lack of a better term, incredible. The fact that you can just draw and then completely water over the lines and yeah. they're not even like sketchy anymore. You know what I mean? Like a colored pencil is sketchy. I know. It's, it's amazing. It really is. I mean, I'm actually very, very pleased with this wash that I'm working on right now. Um, I think part of it helped adding a little more water but um, really beautiful, kind of like a grainy texture almost, kind of hold it up. Just so pretty. Um, yeah, I love that. Yeah, it, it, texture turned out really nice. And I, I really feel like the layering helped um, with getting uh, some of that gray, but having the blue underneath. But you can see how the color shifted um, when I added the um, the gray gray blue on top versus this really saturated blue, um, I think helps to push it back into space a little more. We have a comment um, in the chat. I've used a few kinds of water soluble graphite. I like the hint of color too. I'd recommend the Gansai Tambi tinted graphite pans if you like those moody tones. Um, I have that, that set that you're talking about, the Gansai Tambi. Um, Gansai Tambi, those pans last forever. Mm -hmm. um, but I have the graphite pans and they also make them in like pearlescent colors. Ooh. Um, they're gorgeous. I love Gansai Tambi. 
I didn't realize they made um, the pans of the water soluble graphite. Ah, I will have to check that out because that sounds pretty amazing. Thank you for sharing, Jess. Yeah. If anybody you. else wants to drop anything in the chat, I'm here to narrate <laughs> your comments and your questions. <laughs> Oops. Oh, no. <laughs> My pencil rolled across and added a little extra. <laughs> it was meant to be. I accidentally smudged a little, too. But the cool thing is, I, I guess I can just erase it. <laughs> when it's dry. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Let me see if it works. Yeah, it's um still on there a little bit, but yeah, you can erase if you make a mistake. That's pretty cool, I think. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah. I never think about using my eraser for anything but graphite. So yeah. the fact that you can just erase a lot of things mm -hmm. is really great. <laughs> it, yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I also like how it has kind of a shiny finish to it. So when you layer it on top, I'm trying to get it to reflect. I don't know if it's the camera's picking it up very well, but um yeah, it, it's kind of a shiny, uh, metallic-y almost finish, which is cool. Which I feel like you kind of get when you spread it out, too. That little bit of sheen. Oh, thanks, Lori. I know there's not a lot of detail on the cat, but I actually like this illustration as like a negative space study. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, it looks it's, really nice. Thank you. I, yeah, I think it, it looks kind of cool. That's why I, I was thinking that maybe I would make the cat like a, a tabby or brown color. I kind of like just leaving it totally white and maybe everything else is filled in except for the cat. I think that will look pretty cool. Can we see an up close of what you're <clears throat> what you're doing now? I'm curious to see what the yeah. the pencil strokes look like on top of watercolor. Yeah, so I don't know how well it will show up because I'm using such dark colors, but if you can kind of see right around here is where I'm starting to add more just kind of scribbling in and then I want to do the same thing that I did up here where I blend it out um so but if you in person if you look up close you can see it it looks really I think it looks really nice that kind of rough um pencil texture I've been incorporating that into my drawings a little more where it's kind of loose and scribbly so I really like that I'm gonna turn it this way so that I don't put my hand in wet paint. <laughs> Definitely done that before. Yeah, thank you. So Amelia, this is the first live stream for this box, this winter box. Yes. What else are you thinking of doing project wise um, with the items in this box? Anything you think we can get excited about coming up or are you still planning I'm still doing some planning but I'm really intrigued about the idea of erasing out the pencil so I think I might plan something where we do paintings and drawings and then work backwards and erase out um, all the highlights and some of the details that way I think could be really cool um, so I think for the next one we'll, we'll work on that I like it. Yeah. It's very different, but it sounds yeah. great. Definitely. I, I don't know that I ever would have thought that I would be erasing watercolors. 
but here we are. <laughs> I think that white colored pencil, uh, well, the white pencil will also be handy for that too. Yes. Yeah. I'd really like to um, play around with that more and discover some more interesting techniques. Um, I think we're off to a good start with thinking about layering back in the white with mark making and using it to blend. I feel like there's got to be more interesting things that can be done with them. So we'll see what we discover. I'm just watching you and the second you hit water on that, it just, yeah. just, what was the term you use? It, um, not like blooms, it blooms. Is that the word? Yeah. yeah. It creates like a, it just, I don't know. It just has such a, a pretty effect. That's, I think one of my favorite things about watercolor is when it has that almost stormy look to it when all the colors start to kind of like, it's kind of happening up here where they're all kind of blending out a little bit, I guess, like where the water hits it. I like the blooms. I know that not all watercolor artists like to have them in their paintings, but I personally think that's one of the prettier aspects of watercolor painting. And you can't really plan them. You can, you can try. But a lot of the time, they just kind of happen organically. Very cool. Well, if anybody else would like to share anything, um, oh, we have a comment. Drying at different times causes the blooms. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Some, some parts have more water, so they dry more slowly. Right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Either that or if you're using um Upo paper, mm -hmm. I think it the watercolor just sits on top of Upo paper. So mm -hmm. every time you put paint down, you'll get something. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's cool. I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been lovely, very relaxing. Yeah. Um, last chance if anybody wants to show their work. It's probably wet, so it's kind of hard to show um, your final piece. But um, Amelia, what do you think are your next steps for this? So I think what I'm going to do is the same um, sort of steps that I was working on where filling in, just blocking in the colors. Um, and then the last thing I think I'm going to do is probably go over all the details with either pencil or um, maybe I'll also use the pen to start to outline some parts. I think it depends on sort of how much I want to define. So I might outline just the cat, um, but I think everything else I'll add some pencil details to. So I will finish this piece up and then I will post the the final um, illustration um, and show everybody sort of the final outcome of that too. Awesome. I'm so happy we had a lovely group here um, on a Friday night. So thank you so much for your time. Amelia, thank you for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. And um, we'll work on the uh, the tech issues with your other camera, but I think this was okay. Yeah. I'm glad we could see the painting. That was the most important part. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, this recording will be posted onto the mixed group um, probably on Monday. So be on the lookout for the playback. We'll email you when it's ready. And in the meantime, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thanks, everybody. Bye.